Some say when you genuinely like something, maybe even love what you do, or even if it's just a tool that you use on a daily basis, you're more likely to see its flaws, whether it be their price or certain limitation. You acknowledge them and accept them as you move on with your day. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, you'll notice a reoccurrence appearance of Bodycoon on many of the videos and that is because Bodycoon is probably one of my favorites when it comes to stop motion filmmaking. Which is why I have a lot of good things to say about Bodycoon. However, most if not all the good things I want to say about this figure might not be useful to you, the viewer, whether if you're someone who is on the fence about purchasing this figure or someone who is just thinking about starting a stop motion channel or just someone who wants to give a stop motion a go with a human anatomy. And since your time is valuable and you clicked on this video or if YouTube decided to roll this video, I want to respect that time by telling you and showing you the struggles and my overall experience animating with Bodycoon. So this isn't a review of Bodycoon. This is a review of what it's like animating with Bodycoon. This review is quite difficult for me to write as I really had to sit down and ask myself, why do I like this figure? While attempt to separate my clear biases and review Bodycoon objectively as best I can as someone who films and animate with Bodycoon on a regular basis. And if you like this type of review, consider subscribe and turn on the notification and if you have any particular figure that you've seen featured on the channel, feel free to let me know down in the comments. To me, the way I see Bodycon is similar to a mannequin you see on a boutique store or the wooden mannequin illustrator used as a model or reference for human poses. I think the reason why I am drawn to this wooden figure or wooden mannequin is because they are simple structure with no unique design, no personality set by others other than yourself, essentially a blank slate. And if you are a creator, it will incentivize you to breathe life into it with your very own skill and creativity, regardless if you're an illustrator, stop motion animator, or just a regular filmmaker. In 12 Basic Principles of Animation by Ollie Johnston and Frank Thomas, it emphasized that animator used the principle of appeal, which is the 12th principle to make the characters more interesting. And one of the common ways to give characters more appeal is having a dynamic design by having a variety of shapes or something having a distinctive shape. When we look at Figma 405 or Figma long range Joshi Kose, her design is relatively rounded shape with no clear edges. That is until she has her visor down, turning her eyes from an edgeless round to a rigid rectangle shape. Or something like Figma Genji where his face or helmet is actually the shape of the edge of the blade or the tip of the katana, giving the sense where everything he sets his eye onto have the possibility of getting cut down. But having dynamic design doesn't always mean that it's great when it's physical. You can get away with this with 2D where characters and objects can contort, making movement more seamless. In stop motion, however, animators have to work around this with something like camera angles or visual effects in post-production. In saying that, while Bodycoon doesn't have any distinctive design compared to something like Figma 405 or Figma Genji, what Bodycoon lacks encourages animators to use more expressive key poses to make up for the unique design and hone their stop motion craft, resulting in a more interesting video. Traditional stop motion figure is usually expensive and often construct from scratch for specific projects. The barrier of entry for stop motion filmmaking has never been lowered with action figures. Honestly, it's pretty much a cheat code and give a huge accessibility for anyone paired with a free to use stop motion app on their smartphone to attempt the craft on their own. Action figures like Bodycoon is great, but very few articulatable figurine has the same articulation standard, durability and price point of Bodycoon, which makes this figure very accessible, especially for amateur stop motion animators. And I want to spend time on the subject of animating and hopefully explain why this particular figure is accessible to someone who might be considering trying out the craft of stop motion filmmaking. As someone who is self-taught in the craft of stop-motion filmmaking, Bodycoon is probably one of the most beginner-friendly to start with and learn the basic of manipulating the human anatomy, whether it's intended to or not. Given that his joints have a very generous range of motion, it's not hard to see why Bodycoon can be a lot of amateur stop-motion animator's choice in giving stop-motion a go. This is the part where you, the animator, hone your stop-motion craft. 
And at some point, as you get better and better, you'll also want to demand more and more out of your puppets or object to do for you. In Body Kun's case, his articulation, though it's really great for general range of motion that a human body can do, you will soon find that he will have some precision flaws when posing such as grabbing his own shoulder, raising his knee to his chest for something like a crunch pose. Now at this point, some of you might say I'm nitpicking and say that Bodhikun is meant for illustrator and that's fair and you're probably right. But for those of you who will be purchasing this figure, specifically one Bodhikun or similar figure like these, needs to know that while Bodhikun can do a lot of if not most poses, he can't do everything. If that's what you the collector or animator intended Bodhikun to do. And if you want specific pose but your puppet doesn't allow you to do some time can make or break the shot or make the duration of your project longer. And you can of course get around this problem most of the time with camera tricks as mentioned earlier and create the illusion with camera angles and sound effects. But if you're actively avoiding these camera tricks, especially if it clashes with your artistic vision, you'll have a tough time accepting these limitations. One thing that's worth noting is the durability of this figure. As you animate stop motion, you might occasionally drop or cause the object that you are manipulating to drop, possibly damaging them. After animating with Bodhikun for quite some time, I can tell you that this is probably one of the most durable figure I have animated with. Granted, I never accidentally drop him from an unreasonable height. If there is a tank in the cast on the channel, Bodhikun is a bona fide tank. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that Bodhikun is a blank canvas. And for those of you who like custom figure of your own, will find that Bodhikun and his gentle counterpart Bodhichan might be a great starting point for your own custom figurine with some exceptions. Experience of Kid Basher will see Bodhikun as a great blank canvas with some awesome articulation if you are willing to go the extra mile. But if you're someone who enjoys swapping parts in and out to create your very own custom character quick, you will find that this figure isn't an easy swap since there's a lot more works and step involved to get him to how you personally want him to look aside from just adding a cape or a hoodie and call it a day. I say this because his limbs are not swappable except for his hands compared to something like Figma or Reveltech despite having very similar in their kit. Among all the reasons why I kept returning and tend to use Bodhikun in many of the videos in his channel mainly stems from the balancing of this figure. There are a lot of figures with similar or exactly the same design, you might say. And that is fair and very true. But what differs for me during animation is the weight distribution in many of the poses which Bodhikun is able to do and sustaining that balance which allows the process of filmmaking with Bodhikun and figures with similar design and qualities all the more fun to animate with, especially when you can reserve the stance or arm rig for a more complex scene. Not needing the stance for complicated poses make the long process of filmmaking and editing less tedious and allows you, the animator or filmmaker, to explore more complex poses and shots that you personally want to experiment with. Needless to say, Bodhikun is great for both beginner and experienced stop motion animator. Or if you're someone who likes to draw for key poses, or if you're a kit basher, the quality of this thing is really good, but watch out for those bootleg variant. You can sometimes spot out bootlegs from the longer neck, inconsistent joint and limb size, especially if it's brittle or smells like cheap burnt plastic. Overall, I think Bodhikun has something for everyone, especially if you're someone who is an illustrator, experienced kit basher, animator at any level, or if you just want him to hold cables for decoration on the shelf or something. And that's it for this review. If you want to check out the animators review I've made with Figma Lucina, here it is on the left. And on the right is what YouTube's algorithm think you might be interested in. As always, I hope this video finds you somewhat useful. At the time of writing this, the channel just reached 600 sub, and I want to thank you all so much and I'm very thankful that you're still here. I'm currently preparing another video for the holidays and also give you some updates and plan for the channel for next year, so I hope you stay tuned for that. And that's all from me, take good care of yourself and I'll see you in the next video, bye.